All right, hey everyone, Harold here for Quit Stalling from Quit Stalling, and I'm here at Indy Arena and ESGS 2016 live at the SMX Convention Center in Mall of Asia. With me today, I have the fine folks here. Who are you guys? Let us know. Uh, hi guys, uh, I'm Arvin Kabang. Uh, I'm a producer. I'm the pr game producer from Sanchi Labs, and also the editor for our game that we'll present today. All right. Uh, hello guys, um, I'm Nine Junio. I'm a sound designer of Sanchi Labs. And that's all. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, hi guys, I'm Misha Balboa. I'm the 2DFX artist of the game, Adarna. Alright. Hi guys, um, I'm usually called Doc B by most of my students. I'm the founder of Senshi Labs and the lead writer for Adarna. Alamat ni Maria Blanca. Oh, you seem too young to be a doc. <laughs> All right, let's get things going. So what do we have with us today? Uh, this is Adarna, uh, the sequel of our first game, Adarna, from last year. But this is a story about the women of the Ibong Adarna story. So All this right. is Alamat ni Maria Blanca. All right, so for those unfamiliar with the Ibong Adarna story, uh, could you can you enlighten us just a little bit uh, with for Filipino high school, for those who didn't go to Filipino high school? All right, uh, Ibong Adarna is a required reading in high school. And what we did here, well, if you're not familiar with it, it's a story of a, a, a bird, a magical, mystical bird, legendary bird, that when, when this bird sings, anyone with an illness would actually get healed or get cured by the bird. So in the first story, we had three brothers who were actually competing for... for the affection of their parents, and they were, they were competing for for getting the getting to the legendary bird. That's right. But we are working on uh, we worked on the sequel. This is the sequel. Uh, this is the part that most high school students don't read or mm -hmm. is not read in school. Uh, Juan, the protagonist of the first game or the first uh, part of the novel or the corrido, it's based on an 18th century corrido. Yep. Uh, he went bride shopping well he traveled and bride then he started shopping. he started <laughs> courting three women along the way and then he chose to marry one maria blanca mm -hmm. and then gave the other two to his brothers oh, so, so it's such a man <laughs> such a man uh, so okay so you're, you're focusing on that part of the story yeah all right so let's, let's take a look at the game right now and walk us through what's happening do you want to start play do you want to play the game Oh, okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So we got we got a, we got a really nice loading screen here. Uh, who do, who's the artist? Uh, we actually had seven artists. Yep. Seven, seven artists, and we had one lead artist, uh, Kimberly Warren. Okay. Yeah. So how was it managing seven different artists for one project? I know it could be a pain to have yeah. just one. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Uh, we had one lead <laughs> artist, and then we had everyone. We we got, since her name is Kim, we were like, okay, Kimify your art. Ah, uh, you were saying that. Okay. So all of us had to like, all of the artists had to learn how to follow her style. She takes a lead, and then everyone yeah. follows her style, which is kind of difficult for artists. Yes, because yeah. they have their own. Yeah. So you uh, you were able to do it successfully, from what I can see. Uh, was it was there ever ever any problems uh, Kimifying someone uh, someone with Kimifying their art? Uh. I think they enjoyed learning new art styles, but the main problem there we, that we had was that we were, we were all working virtually. Oh, so it, okay. it's kind of hard. If it's already hard enough, if you're working like you're seeing Next to each somebody other. Yep. Yeah. Uh, demonstrate it, but virtually it's like there's a lot of rejections. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This okay. is not kimified enough. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So walk us through what's happening right now. So. Uh, this is actually the ending of the first Adarna game that we made. Mm -hmm. But this is not how it looked like before, but we start off where the, the male protagonists left off. Okay. So, so it's a little bit like Castlevania, if you've ever played Castlevania, where it starts <laughs> yeah. off with some other character. Some other yeah. character, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the Belmont clan. So it starts yeah. off with the brothers yeah. from the original story. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, uh, tell us what kind of game it is. Tell, tell us the gameplay mechanics. It's an it's a turn-based RPG, and mm -hmm. you can see there that's uh, uh, 
it's like Castlevania also all the skills are already there because these brothers are already strong by, yeah. by this time. So, so they have all their abilities unlocked. Yeah, you can already yeah. see all the skills, all the possible skills that you can uh, use here. Yeah, and it's turn-based. Uh, people w people at home might find this similar to some Final Fantasy games. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure those. I'm sure those games were, were inspirations to you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, as you can see now, uh, mm -hmm. it's in Tagalog. <laughs> yeah, it's in Tagalog. Uh, oh yeah, tell us more about that. Tell oh us yeah. More. Uh, it's it's really hard trying to uh, turn turn every word into Tagalog. Mm -hmm. Like you'll miss out some borrowed words. Sure. Uh, like original or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but as the editor, I have to make make the language more interesting. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because uh, uh, you have to make it more relatable to all audiences, not not just the people who should be reading this in in grade <laughs> school or high school. All right, that's interesting. So uh, we're talking about the language. Why focus on Filipino uh, or Tagalog? Primarily, instead of maybe uh, localizing it to different languages. Uh, first off, it's because Ibong Adarna is originally a Filipino uh, story. Filipino story. story. Yeah, that's yes. right. That's uh, right. So we got we got to focus on that. Second, uh, the feel of the game is also Filipino. Mm -hmm. okay. So in line with that, we have we have to keep the language similar. Mm -hmm. to how it feels like so we, we also avoided um, y the deep Tagalog words yeah. because it's not relatable anymore yes so, that's right so we had to make it relatable there, yeah. there are certain expressions that are a bit modern so that uh, kids could just ease into it yeah that's right that's right Tr sort of trick them into learning about, <laughs> <laughs> about the story okay that's good that's good okay so it's, you're taking a, a bit of a nationalistic approach mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you're keeping the property Filipino. You're keeping it Tagalog. Uh, so there are no plans to, to localize it to uh, other languages? As of now, no. Even our music is like, he had to go through a lot of revisions yep. that doesn't sound Filipino enough. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the music. So, uh, did you have to use local instruments? Um, so far, um, only a few. Only a few, yeah. okay. But you did, get a, you did get the feel that you were yeah. going for. That's great, that's great. And I, I'm looking at the art right now and the art looks very Filipino. The clothing looks very traditional Filipino. Clothing that you you'll only see in museums nowadays, and it looks it looks fantastic. It, it looks uh, appealing to in a different way. You know, you don't see this in Western games or even other Asian games. This is very unique to Southeast Asian culture. So, uh, tell us more about what inspired you to to design the the characters in this way, but at the same time, you know, keeping it very traditional. Oh. The the first game we had in the Darna one, it was it felt very Western, because mm -hmm. uh, even the customs are so patriarchal and all that, and mm -hmm. it's very Western. But this is uh, when I went, I, I traveled all over the Philippines and oh, okay. visiting museums, and we're like taking photos of the weapons. You did it for the game. Yeah, that this is, is so interesting. cool. Like, so taking uh, and then. The designer is not here right now. I was like passing everything to him, and then he had to to think. We had to think of what to name our attacks, our skills. They have to sound very Filipino. That's uh, right. Even the even the weapons, they have to sound Filipino. We had a problem. We had a problem with the gems. How do you make it sound Filipino? Oh, <laughs> with, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so have you been successful in doing that, or are you still in the process of refining it? I think we are pretty happy with with how we did it. That's good. Because uh, right now, it, the, the art is distinct, at least for us. We haven't seen a game that that exudes this much um, local vibe. Yes, that's right. Okay, so it's great. I, I'm I'm seeing this. So, uh, what what are we doing right now? So right now, uh, since our protagonist now is Maria Blanca, we're doing away with a bride shopping story. Mm -hmm. And we made our own story for the three women. So right now, she's trying to find the Ibong Adarna bird for her sister who got sick. Yeah. Okay. So she's traveling through villages and then helping people who have love problems. Like this guy, he has a love problem there. <laughs> You'll actually see a bit of a pre-Hispanic culture here. Like it, when when the guy is successful in courting another girl, he tends to serve the family of the girl by uh, 
something. Yeah. Dow- dowry? Like, iigib ng tubig, something like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. What you call you dowry? Yeah. Da- the dowry? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all of that. So, and then, but even though it's kind of a feminist approach, we didn't want to diminish the men yeah, either. Yeah. So, um, when later you meet the guys, at least they, they fought for what they believe in and they know how to handle themselves. Though they learn a bit of the culture of the women here in this game, so so there was a bit of a, a compromise yeah. between the characters for them to to be able to you know finally marry each other or something. That's right. That's right. Oh, well, if you ask me, you know, just degrade the guys a little bit more. You know, just just make us feel a little <laughs> worse because it's our turn. It's our turn. Gaming's been so sexist in the past. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. You find a great balance, and I, I appreciate that, and I'm sure. You're, People who play your games will appreciate the balance and culture. Uh, so tell us more about the, the development process. So how long have you been doing uh, development for, for your game? So uh, it took us a year. Almost, before, a, almost, almost a year. Almost a year. Yep. Usually games like this get finished in, a, in three months or something if you're working on it full time. Mm-hmm. But most of us have day jobs. So we were working okay. on this on our spare time. Like uh, Arvin is also working uh, as in game ops. So, oh, okay. so he has to like uh, make use of his weekends. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and That's I right. teach uh, three times a week. Okay, where do you teach? Uh, in College of Saint Benilde and Asia Pacific College. So. Oh, game development. Yeah, game okay. development. And so I u- I use the spare uh, days of the week to be able to work on on this one. I'm sure those are few and far between. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Uh, how, lo- how much longer are you thinking of, uh, of continuing development for your game? Or have you already released it? This, is a, this has already been released All last right. month, right? Yes. Last yes. month. Oh. In, yes, uh, in oh, itch.io. Okay. Um, we had the game on Steam, but we didn't think that this is going to be for Steam because mm-hmm. uh, it's in Tagalog. Because <laughs> of the language barrier. Because of the yeah. language barrier. And, and the objective that we have, we're trying to reach the Filipino market mm-hmm. for this one. All right, and h- how's the reception been so far? We we are actually amazed that even foreigners were, because <laughs> because uh, I'm posting screenshots on Instagram and foreigners were starting to follow. Oh, and that's like, great! How can you even understand this? And so you mu- you might be pressured in the future to, <laughs> yeah. to localize it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were interested in the. It looks different. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really does. It looks different, so they were like, "Wow, ha, it, it, it's a different." It's a different culture, and mm-hmm. they're introduced to this, and the the protagonists are well, they're different from yeah. from what they're used to. Yeah, because when you think of other RPGs, you, you or or other games in general, they're either Western or they're fantastical. You mm-hmm. know, the, you you think of medieval fantasy like Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and the aesthetic that Dungeons and Dragons has yep. established, and you never get aesthetic like this, and it, that's what makes it unique in terms of the art style. And it really shows, and it really I'm sure that's why you, you're, you're getting interest from different cultures in different countries. So uh, the reception's been good, which yeah, is great. Is. Uh, what, what else do you want to talk about uh, regarding the game? Well, we're trying to port it right now so that we could make it available for Android because there were other people who were commenting they wanted to play it on, on their mobile phones. During so. their commutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Typical, yeah, typical Filipino mm-hmm. time to play. Uh, while, while you're commuting, while you're sitting on the can. Uh, so, uh, how, how's that going? How's that coming along? Uh, I'm taking a little bit more time because I need to optimize a lot of the graphics and also some of the code. Mm-hmm. So, I'm actually the one doing the, <laughs> the, yeah, the optimization so I could port it properly. That's great. That's great. All right. So, let's wrap things up. Is there anything else you want to say before we, before we head out? Well, you can visit us at senshi.ph. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you could uh, take a look at our other games aside from this because we're mostly uh, an edutainment company. So, Edutainment, that's a great word. Mm-hmm. I, I like that word. All right, so senshi games, mm-hmm. uh, .ph. Senshi.ph. Senshi.ph. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, thank you guys so much for your time. If there's anything else you guys want to ch- check out, Head on over to Indie Arena. It's our last day here at SMX Convention Center. If you want to find out more about me, head on over to www.quitstalling.us. Quitstalling us. Uh, and find more of our podcasts, our articles. I'd like to thank Wen in Manila and XSplit for letting us come here and interview all these wonderful indie developers. And once again, head on down to Indie Arena here at ESGS 2016. We'll see you guys in the next video.